What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at the hands-free one and hands-free two power stations. As the name implies, these are hands-free power stations that are made to be carried on your back with the included backpacks. Definitely a very cool product as it's basically a power station, backpack, and a camera bag all packed into one unit. Taking a look at the specs for the Bluetti hands-free one, this has a backpack with a carrying capacity of 42 liters, a 268.8 watt hour LifePo4 battery, a 300 watt power handling, and is very lightweight at only 11 pounds. Taking a look at the specs for the hands-free 2, this has a backpack with a carrying capacity of 60 liters, a 512 watt hour LifePo4 battery, a 700 watt power handling, and is also still lightweight at only 16.5 pounds. All right, so first off, going over the backpacks first, these are both made of Oxford 600D material with a waterproof zipper, and both of them can carry up to 66 pounds. This has what they call their Ergo Blue system, which stands for Ergonomic Plus Bluetti. This is an ergonomic and breathable design, allowing the bag to be evenly distributed and comfortable to carry. So taking a look at the bags themselves, these are definitely very high quality and durable feeling bags. They could have just slapped a power station in a random cheap backpack, but they definitely went all out and made very good bags here. As you can see, you have a ton of different loops here, different attachment points here, some more down here, a pocket over here, more pockets on the side, and then a few compartments here inside the bag as well. So first off, and the most important thing about these backpacks is they have an included power station. And that slips right inside here. I'll take this out in a moment and show you what it looks like. But the cool thing about it is it not only stores the backpack inside the bag, but it's also usable while it's inside the bag as well. So right here you have two zippers. You can open this all the way or partially. And this is a rubber flap with little breathable holes under here as well. So opening this up, I'm going to go ahead and open up all the way so you can see what it looks like. As you can see on this side, you have your AC output port. You have one AC port. And then down here, you have your port to charge it. Flipping the backpack over, you have the other flap here. And this is where you have all your ports from the power station. As you can see, you have your DC input here at the bottom. You have your USB ports. And then you have your screen right here in the middle. So definitely very cool that you have the power station there and everything packed up. You don't need to unpack anything. Just unzip it, plug in what you gotta plug in, get it charged up, unplug it, zip it back up, and just like that, you're good to go without any extra effort. As I said earlier, the Bluetti Hands-Free One is a 42 liter bag, and this one is a 60 liter bag. They both have the same depth, but as you can see, the Bluetti Hands-Free Two is a much taller bag. Besides the increased height, they do have the same storage options, but obviously with this one, you just get more room inside the bag. So taking a look at the front, you have a pocket up here. You can put cables or accessories in there. Same thing, another pocket down here, which also has internal sleeves to keep everything more organized. Coming alongside, you have a mesh pocket, another loop here, several different loops in the front so you can hang on like a beach towel or any other things you wanna put here in the front. Other side, you have another mesh pocket. And then I went ahead and unzipped it here. So here at the side, it has a zipper that goes all the way around. So if you don't need too much storage, you can go ahead and tuck that in and make it a little more slim profile. And then you can also unzip it and make it a much fatter backpack as well. So again, definitely a lot of storage in these bags. So undoing the very front zipper, which is the expandable portion, that's where you have this area here, which again can be used or not used depending if you untuck that side zipper. Or if you want, you can also use it tucked in and put some slimmer items in there. But as you can see, a lot of storage in this area. Then you also have some more storage at the top here. All right, so I laid the bag down to make this easier to see. So again, at the top, very front portion, front flap, you have a lot of storage. You have these mesh areas, lots of zippers. Bottom, you have more mesh zippers. Then you also have a buckle to hold everything in. And then turning that back, this is where you have your main portion of the bag. And this is where you're going to store your camera and all your lens accessories, everything like that. You do have padded dividers and in the back. It also has padding as well. So just like a regular camera bag, you can keep everything inside here very organized and held in place. And as you can see, similar to a regular camera bag, again, these dividers 
are all removable as well. So you can remove some of them or even remove all of them if you want to store something entirely different in these bags as well. And I totally forgot to mention the flaps here on the front compartment does open a full 180 degrees. So you can access everything inside here. And same with the main compartment. This also opens a full 180 degrees. So you can also easily access everything in here as well. So when you get this completely filled up, the power station plus all your camera accessories and stuff you have carried in here can easily go to 20 pounds, if not a lot more. But they have you covered with that as well. Nobody wants to be carrying that much on their back and feel uncomfortable. But with this, they have a big piece of foam right here. So as you're carrying it, it's not pushing pressure on your back. These two straps are padded. You have another big cushion right down here for your lower back. And then you also have two more cushions here at the side. So with this system, all of the weight is not just resting on your shoulders, but instead evenly and comfortably distributed all across your back. Coming right down here, you have one pocket here where you can store some more stuff, little pouch here. And then over here, you have another pouch and this comes with their waterproof cover. So if you're out somewhere and it's raining, just slap this over the bag and everything inside the bag, including the power station and all your accessories will be completely protected and not get wet. These bags do have an IP4X rating, which means the backpack is going to repel water and still keep your equipment dry in the snow or rain. It is not completely waterproof though, so you don't want to get the bag very wet or submerge it in water. So if it's gonna be raining a lot, that's where you wanna take out that waterproof cover and put that over the bag to keep it completely dry. Last but not least, Bluetti also has a folding solar panel that you can attach and hang off the back here. So you can actually charge while you're out walking as well. So taking a look at the actual power stations, these are definitely very unique looking. As you can see, they have a very slim profile, very compact and easy to store and transport. Coming to the sides, they're about the same thickness, but as you can see, the hands-free two is much taller. And then right here up top, you also have the handle so you can carry it easily and put it into the bag and take it out as well. Even when you're not using these inside of the backpack, no one's gonna be camping all the time. They're still very useful at home and best of all, they're not gonna take up too much room. As you can see, it's about three, four inches in width. So you can easily put this next to your computer or have it tucked away in a corner somewhere and it's barely gonna take up any room at all. Definitely a big fan of that as most power stations are square and just require more floor space. The ports on both of these are identical. The only difference is this one has a max power of 300 watts. And as you can see, this one puts out 700 watts. And once again, this one has the larger battery capacity of 512 watt hours, while this one only has 268.8. So taking a look at the ports, you have two 100 watt USB-C ports, which is not something you see very commonly on smaller power stations like this. Usually you might get a 100 watt and 60 watt, or even sometimes a 60 watt and 30 watt. So definitely good to see two 100 watt ports as you're gonna be able to charge everything a lot quicker. And then right down here, you have two 15 watt USB-A ports. And then last but not least, you have your DC slash PV input. And on this one, it has a max solar input of 200 watts. And then the hands-free two has a max solar of 350 watts. So to give you somewhat of a comparison of what these two are capable of, when it comes to a camera, you're gonna get 15 charges on the hands-free one, 23 charges from the hands-free two. With the laptop, you get four charges on this one, seven charges on this one. GoPro, 19 and 27. A smartphone, 12 on the hands-free one, 18 on the hands-free two. And these both have what they call the IntelliCharge AI BMS, which has a very low standby power consumption of only seven watts. IntelliCharge also automatically monitors solar input and initiates charging and shuts down after one minute without input in cloudy weather to further save on standby power draw as well. So even if you have them on the entire time while you're out, you're not going to lose too much power thanks to that much lower standby draw. Flipping it around, as I showed you, they both have an AC input. The only difference is this has a max of 300 watts and this one has a max of 700 watts. And then at the bottom, you have your charging port. As you can see, it just takes a standard cable, so you do not need an external charging brick or anything like that. When it comes to charging speed, the hands-free one has a max of 300 watts AC input, which can charge from zero to 80 in only 45 minutes. And then the hands-free two has a max AC input of 600 watts, and it also charges from zero to 80 in 45 minutes. 
Last but not least, these both have a UPS function with a switch over time of less than 20 milliseconds. So overall, the hands-free one is going to be good if you don't need to power too much or are going on shorter trips. And then if you do need more power, that's where the hands-free two would be better as it has a higher power handling and almost double the battery capacity as well. All right, so I drained the hands-free one from 100% to zero with a 160 watt load and it put out a total of 229 watt hours. Doing the math that gives this unit a usable capacity of 85.4%. Then I drained the hands-free two from 100% to zero with about a 430 watt load and it put out a total of 461 watt hours, which is a usable capacity of 90%. All right, let's go ahead and test out the inverter. As I said earlier, this one can put out a max of 300 watts and then the hands-free two puts out a max of 700 watts. So right here I have my 14 inch MacBook Pro. It has about 75% battery, so it might not draw as much as it could on low battery. So it looks like it's actually drawing about 50 watts and this normally charges at about 60, 70 watts. Right here I have a Samsung S10 tablet. Let's go ahead and plug that in. Got too much of a short cable there, but we'll make it work. Looks like it didn't add too much. We're about 57 watts now. Got some Bluetooth headphones here. Let's go ahead and add that in. And then last but not least, I also have a cell phone. Add that into the mix as well. So charging does fluctuate. So as you can see, all of these items right now are only pulling 60 watts. If they were all dead, it'll probably pull closer to 80 watts. As I said, this can put out a max of 300 watts. So when it comes to everyday technology, there's gonna be no problem for this power station. It's all a walk in the park. Even if you're charging two 100 watt USB-C items and then two USB-A items, you're still only gonna put you at 230 watts max. So then you still have 70 or 80 watts on the AC input to power a light or any other small accessory as well. So once again, definitely more than enough power for a camping or hiking trip. So this is easily going to be able to power your camera and many other things as well. As I said earlier, this does have the same exact amount of ports. So you can easily move everything over here and charge it the same way. But on this one, you're going to have much more power left over. Or even if you still just want to charge smaller things, you're going to be able to charge them longer and more times with this power station. Given that this one puts out a max of 700 watts besides regular technology and smaller things, you're also going to be able to power a mini fridge, a small heater, and many other things as well with that higher power handling. Overall, these are definitely great power stations. The backpack design is a very innovative idea. They perform very well. And best of all, they also come at a great price as well. So all in all, if you happen to be shopping for a truly portable power station, I would highly recommend these here, which again are the Bluetti Hands-Free 1 and the Bluetti Hands-Free 2. If you would like to purchase or get more information on either of these, I'll also have the links in the description as well. All right, well, that all wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.